this is the time of the year when Adiyogi's attention first fell upon the seven celebrated disciples, now celebrated disciples. So we're in this month when an ascetic, a yogi who is completely uninvolved with what's around him, is beginning to get involved. Slowly the intention of sharing his experience is beginning to blossom in this month. From the last full moon day to the coming one which is going to be referred, which is referred to as the Guru Purnima, it is these twenty-eight days that Shiva could not take his attention off the Saptarishis who had prepared, who had done some simple preparatory steps for eighty-four long years without even a moment of attention from him. And now his attention upon his disciples, the first seven ones, was undivided. So this month is seen as a month where even a, a completely heartless ascetic could not ignore and he became compassionate. Somebody who had hardened himself in such a way that the world can never touch him, loosened up became compassionate and was compelled to become a teacher or a guru for which he had no intention at all. So this month is seen as the best time to receive the grace of the guru. This is a good time to be open to grace because this is a time when even an ascetic who smeared himself with the ash of the dead of many other things, one important thing is that he has made himself like he is dead to the world, that he is no more available to the world around him, the people around him. But even that yogi softened up and became compassionate. So this is a good time to seek grace, this is a good time to make yourself receptive to the process. This is a good time to earn that attention from the grace. What should I do is always the question. If you don't do anything of your own, that's the best way to be receptive. That you're less of yourself, that is the best way to be receptive. The sadhana is always structured like this so that it absorbs you into activity in such a way that in the daily process of living you forget who you are, who you, you forget what you are, you forget what your life is about, you just absorbed into what's happening. That is the best way to receive grace. Do you know you even breathe better when you're not aware of who you are and what you are? You see how smoothly people are breathing when they're asleep. 
you watch their breath through the day, it is going through various turmoils. Everything that happens in your mind, the more limited you make yourself, you will see the more limited the breathing process becomes. When you sleep, that's how it should be happening all the time, but when you're awake, you are there, <laughs> even in the way of the breath. <laughs> <laughs> so, just to simply like the tree is standing here, just to be here. Just standing here means it is not here doing nothing, it is doing everything that it has to do. But simply that just like that. There's a beautiful expression. In the Zen system of allowing human consciousness to grow, so when a disciple goes to a Zen master, and ask, what should I do for my spiritual growth? Sweep the floor, chop the wood, cook the food, that's all. For that, why should I come here? I can do it at home. But uh, they are sweeping the floor to your own floor. You will not sweep next house floor if it's dirty, you will not. Chopping the wood for your own use, cooking food just for yourself and who you consider as yours. You're using every activity to enhance who you are, instead of using every activity to dissolve who you are. This is all the difference between making our activity making our karma either into your bondage or into your process of liberation. Either you're acquiring karma or your karma is becoming yoga. That's all it is. Either you're doing your activity to enhance yourself or are you doing your activity to dissolve yourself. So, just sweeping the floor, cooking food, planting a tree, not on your property, not for you and your children to sit under its shade, only you and your children to sit under its shade. Simply planting it, anybody may sit. Your enemy may go and enjoy it. It's okay. hmm? You plant a mango tree, your enemy and his children may eat the mangoes. It's all right. You don't care who ate, just plant. Now the activity is process of dissolution. Otherwise every activity is a way of imprisoning yourself. It is activity which is entangling people, unfortunately. Human ability to do things, unfortunately is being used to imprison themselves. So this month is the month of grace. Grace is like manure for growth, that a human being can catapult himself to another dimension of existence, capability and possibility. So making use of grace, what should we do? nothing to do. The less you do within yourself and the more you do outside of yourself, the more available you become to grace. Doing things outside would not be necessary if you can simply sit here and do nothing. But that's not possible, isn't it? Any kind of activity or situation should not become a limiting factor for one's ability to receive and absorb grace. 
if all you wanted is more and more words, you should have gone to a university. I'm sure they can speak much more than me, the professors in the university. Or you could read the Vedas, or even better you could read the dictionary, <laughs> nothing like it. Everything is right there. Really, have you ever tried to read a dictionary from page one to the last page? Please try, it's very interesting. Everything is there, really. So, you don't come to your guru just to listen to his words. It's not about the words, 